going to go through. We all are. So I want to talk about that whole thing in respect to, to, to prayer. I, I, I want to give you an example. So let's turn to the book of 1 Samuel. Let's go backwards from Ecclesiastes to 1 Samuel. And I put the scriptures in the chat. So uh, 1 Samuel the 23rd chapter. And I want to, I want to, I want to show you something. And, and this is prayer. This is part three of prayer. We've been talking about prayer. We've been talking about a lot of things, but I've asked you that you began to do a prayer study and begin to study what the word of God has to say about prayer, find scriptures about prayer and begin to write them down and began to study because I want you to be strong in the area of prayer because it is so important. But I want to teach you why it is. Why is it so important? And what have I been doing and are my prayers being answered? And so I'm, 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 I'm giving you lessons and I'm giving you scriptures and I'm giving you uh, various things to help you with your life of prayer, which is different than a prayer life. Because that means I do it when it's convenient or I do it when, but a life of prayer means I pray without ceasing, even as the word of God tells me I should. I don't wait until a crisis happens in my life and then I decide that I would go before the Lord. Then quite. These are some of the reasons we're not so effective in prayer. So I want to go to the book of um, 1 Samuel. I want to go to the 23rd chapter and I want to read, uh, verses 1 through 14. So that's quite a few scriptures. And again, I am reading from the King James Version. So if you will follow me and do know that I do stop and I I paraphrase as I go, but I want you to be able to understand what it is that I'm trying to share with you. So I want to start um, 1 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, and I want to start at 1. And I think I just want to do a little backdrop, a little backstory. Most of us know King David. If we know him from nothing else, we do know him from writing the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie. We generally know who, who King David is, and this is King David. And he is running from King Saul. He is not King David yet. He is David, uh, and he's running from King Saul. Saul is the king at that time, and I don't really have time to get too deep into the backstory, but it's important, important that I let you know where it is that we are as best I can in the time that we have. So David is running from King Saul, who is trying to kill him because David is anointed, and David will ultimately be his replacement. And so there's some other things that have gone on along the way, but Saul has developed a, a, a hatred for David and he's chasing him, trying to kill him. So David and about 600 men that are with him are hanging around the cave of Adullam. And some of you know that whole story, but they're kind of hanging out because they, he's on the run and these guys are following David. David is their captain per se. And so they're all just kind of hanging out without a real place to be, just kind of trying to stop Saul from, from catching up with David and killing him. So that's kind of what we have that's going on. And so if any of you know of the, tr the 12 tribes of Israel, we know of Judah. And so they're hanging out in Judah's territory. So the Philistines, the enemy of Israel, has come up against a city by the name of Kailah. And you see it in your Bible is probably spelled K-E-I-L-A-H, pronounced Kyla. So the Philistines decide they're taking land and they're taking territory and they run right up on the city of Kyla, which is a city in Judah. It is a fenced and a walled city, even as they used to be. And they, of course, would wall their cities uh, and fence them for protection against enemies. So... The Philistines decide, well, we want this land, we want this city, and we're going to take it. And David hears about it, and this is kind of where we pick up in chapter 23. And I'd like to start reading. It says, Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kila, and they rob the threshing floors, which means they have gone in and taken their grains. They have gone in and decided we're going to take over Kyla, the, their enemies. And so that's what's happening. Therefore, David, he inquired 
of the Lord. And this is key. I want you to underline inquired of the Lord. And it's likely not reading like that if you're not reading the King James Version. But David asked the Lord. He prayed. He inquired of the Lord. That's what we do when we pray. We inquire of the Lord. Most times, really, though, we just tell God, Lord, help me with this. We don't so, so, we don't so much ask God. We kind of tell him. And see, that, that, that's a problem because when we pray, there needs to be an inquiry. We, we don't inquire. We're not taught to pray that way. And, and indeed, we bring our prayer and our supplications before the Lord. We do do that indeed. But we have to come to a place of maturity in prayer where we begin to inquire. That means, God, what, what do you want? What should I do? And I know this is a little far. Because we're used to, well, I'm just going to just, you know, say what I want to say to God. And, and we're encouraged to do that sometimes as we mature and as our prayers mature and as we mature in prayer, then we understand that we really want whatever the problem is in our life or someone else's life. What we really want is, is the will of God. Uh, okay. Let me share something with you. Um, Put a finger in uh, 1 Samuel. I'm going to get back to it. I want to just go quickly. And you really don't have to go with me, but the scripture is there in the uh, chat. Luke 11, 1 through 2. Luke 11. Now, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but I want you to go with me. Luke chapter 11, 1 and 2. It says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a, excuse me, in a certain place, when he ceased One of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So the first thing you did is you hallowed, you praised, you lifted God up. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. But he, 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 he puts in the prayer, your will be done, Lord. Thy will be done. Then he says, give us day by day our daily bread. And we do know there are different variations of the Lord's prayer throughout the Bible. But I wanted you to see, he says, Lord, your will be done. Your will, your will be done. We don't, we don't pray like that. And let me say something to you again. We have to mature as Christians. Some people will tell you, I gave my life to the Lord one Easter and I was 12 and now you're 58. You still pray the same. You still act the same with God. You still worship the same. You still give the same. Where is the growth in the relationship? For those of you that have children, if you have insisted on treating your children as adults like you did when you were children, you have a problem. And you expect your kids to to, to mature. There are certain things I can't keep giving you money. It's time for you at 27 to get a job or whatever. Relationships have to mature for them to be lasting and meaningful. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 29. Are y'all still with me? Let me know so in the chat if you're still with me. If I've gotten you confused or you've gotten lost, say something. That's the benefit, guys, of signing up and registering. You can chat and say, hold up, you're going too fast. You confused me or no, I'm right with you. So we're here in David and his 600 men and David has inquired of the Lord because the enemies of Israel, the Philistines, have gone up against the city of Kila, which is in Judah. I'm at 23 and 2. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, he said, go and smite the Philistines and save Kyla. So he asked of the Lord and the Lord told him, how many of us wait to hear what God is going to say when we pray? Oh, that's so key. That, that that was good. That was good. 
That was good. Sometimes I get excited about what I'm teaching myself because the word of God is that good to me. So he waited and God said, oh, okay, yeah. God said, go, go. Go and, 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 and save Kyla. Okay? He didn't just jump up and decide that he was going to go. Okay? He didn't. And we always feel like it's okay for me to do whatever it is really that I want to and I'm able to. Should we always do that? Or do we wait for God's instruction and direction when we inquire? And so most times we don't because we don't inquire. We just tell him. Oh, Lord, help this person and that this person asks for prayer. And that's the way we pray. And David's men said unto him, I'm at three. Are you at three with me? First Samuel 23 and three. And David's men said unto him, behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we come to Kila against the armies of the Philistines? They said, in other words, we're running from Saul. I mean, we is, we're Israel. Saul is too. And so is Kila, but we're scared. We're just kind of hanging out here. Uh, well, now we got to go fight. <laughs> then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, get up, go to Kyla. And God says, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. So, he prayed, and then he got scared about the answer. How many of you are scared about your answers that you might be getting from God? Because sometimes, we, we, you know, God will say something to us, and that's spiritual. If, we ever have, if we're ever having a conversation with God, that's spiritual. But how many of you do know that the natural things around you can make you afraid? You see, he had men around him that didn't hear. Oh, Lord, that is so good. I'm about to put something in the chat myself on that. That's so good. He had men around him that didn't hear what God said to him. And sometimes God will answer you, and people around you didn't hear what it was that God said to you. And you'll let them talk you out of what it is that God said. So he went back and he asked God again. And God said, okay, <clears throat> okay. He said, my answer is the same thing that it was the first time, but I'm going to put a little bit more on it. I'm going to go in and I'm going to fight for you. Now tell him I said that. Now go and do what I said and fight and say, Kyla, how many of you are in a position and in something right now that you've prayed about? You've inquired, you asked God, you felt like you heard what he said, and now things around you have made you afraid to go forward. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So five says, I'm at verse five. So David and his men went to Kyla and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kyla. And it came to pass when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Kyla, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. An ephod was something that the priests used to wear. And this was per the design of God when he gave uh, Moses the outline of the tabernacle and everything that, need, that pertained to the tabernacle. And that is another, whew, that is another study altogether. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, look, uh, send me an email to remind me that I've got to do some teaching on the tabernacle. But the ephod was part of the priest, the high priest, it was part of his uh, garbs that he wore. He had certain garbs that he wore that he ministered to God in. And the ephod 
was uh, 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 almost like a um, like a vest almost, but but very different than that. And it had 